Well, good day! So, this video is a double request video. Firstly, Tom Hartwy wanted to see another Christmas cartoon. Didn't specify which one, so I'm gonna pick Ice Age. And request number dose was that my buddy Chris wanted to see more puppetry in these videos. And so with that, more puppetry there will be! So, as per usual, if you want to take a look at the menu on the side here, we'll kind of uh, go through all the stuff over there. And, uh, yeah, yeah! So, alright, let's go! So, it's Christmas in the prehistoric times, which, you know, actually really makes no sense at all. But man, I don't care because it's Christmas! So, Manny the Mammoth is helping out with the Christmas decorations, and he brings out the fabulous Christmas Rock! A Christmas tradition! And Manny's kid, Peaches, is all forms of pumped up because, you know, that means Santa's gonna leave her gifts under this ball of spherical granite. It still makes no sense. So, Sid, you know, the Clumsosaurus, checks things out, and man, he is not really impressed by this rock. He figures Santa needs something, like, bigger to see, you know, like like, um, a tree. You know, those things that are in overabundance in the forest that they live in. But uh, still, he decorates up a tree and everyone's like, wow, that actually looks pretty good. But it's a total disaster. His ice star topper goes flying and it eventually <laughs> destroys the Christmas rock. Like, how is that possible? Science defying moment. And Manny, in his rage, invents the concept of the naughty list, which Sid is now on. Poignantly, which makes Sid sad. Peaches overhears Manny and Ellie saying that, you know, Santa's not really real and neither is this list, which makes Peaches furious and she intends to do something about it. So she, Sid, and Crash and Eddie embark on a quest to the North Pole to prove that Santa Claus is real, damn it! And, well, to get Sid off of this very real naughty list that they all just found out about. <laughs> and so, like a bunch of hobbitses, they're off. Gan. But off to a horrible start. They fall down this large crevasse, but are easily saved by a flying reindeer named Prancer. Dude's pretty hip and slick and, you know, like, full of overconfidence. But still like a total mensch, man, so he decides to fly them all up to the North Pole himself. The North Pole, with their peppermint bark trees and sugar plums that grow in the wild. You know, like that wonderful place. And so Peaches is all pumped up because she can finally go see Santa, right? Wrong! There is an army of small sloths called the Santourage, and they are an army that doesn't let anybody disturb Santa. It's his busy season after all, right? He doesn't have time to talk to fans. But our Ice Age group is not deterred. They're gonna bust through the Santourage lines, man, and go see the Jolly Man. And with the confrontation that happens, BOOM! They caused a horrible avalanche! Well, you know, it kind of works out in one way because Manny, Ellie, and Diego were on a search and rescue mission and, well, they wound up finding and rescuing everyone, so in that regard, it's a great success. But the avalanche also destroys Santa's workshop and everything else around there, man, so, you know, there goes Christmas, right? So Santa, in his anger, for really invents the naughty list and everyone there is tossed on it. Damn, that's like life imitating art. Or is it? No. Because Manny, who now totally believes in Christmas miracles, is hatching a miracle of his own. He gets every one of his friends and the Santourage, you know, to build all a bunch of new toys again, rebuild Santa's sleigh, you know, everything, and ba bam tries to save Christmas. And he only had two hours to do it. But they totally did it. Or did they? Huh. Prancer decides he'll fly the sleigh all around the world, but man, this sleigh is just too heavy for one reindeer. I guess flying a baby mammoth on his head wasn't too heavy, but you know, a bunch of toys, yeah, <laughs> that's a bit too far. So Prancer takes off to get his flying reindeer family to help, and which they do. You know, like you got Dasher, Dancer, Vixen, Comet, Cupid, Donner, Unz Blitzen, and they all team up to get Santa's sleigh flying. Which they totally do! They take off to deliver gifts all around the world, 
and this gets Sid and everybody else off of the naughty list and onto the nice list, and they all get gifts and celebrate Christmas together in Santa's, you know, front yard in the North Pole, so it's a pretty wonderful ending there. Also, there was the obligatory mini-story of Scrat the Sabertooth Squirrel trying to get an acorn, but, uh, but it all goes as horribly as usual, and as close as he is to getting any kind of a nut, totally again. Maybe next year, buddy. Maybe next year. And with that, that is the end of this series fantastic tale. So yeah, like that was actually a pretty awesome little story, man. Quick to the point and you know, lots of Christmas fun. But like, what kind of a story is it really, right? Like they kind of hint that it's a Christmas tradition origin type of a story of how we get a lot of Christmas stuff going on and you know, they hit on some things hither and thither. But like when the Ice Age crew gets up to the North Pole, like a lot of those Christmas traditions are still there anyway. Santa Claus, the North Pole, the making gifts, the flying reindeer. And yeah, the flying reindeer, man, that really gets you thinking, you know, like about this whole kind of story. Because like, you know, what the hell is going on? These reindeer are clearly flying because of magic. Where do they get that? And Santa Claus is a fully functioning modern human being? This is the prehistoric times, right? So this is well before Santa Claus, St. Nicholas, the birth of baby Jesus, and well before civilization. So how do you have this fully modern human being? Like, is Santa Claus a celestial? Is he one of the original beings that was born during the formation of the universe? Because that would make sense in this instance. But you know, at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter because this is actually a really fun, really quick, just, you know, get right to Christmas kind of a story. You get to see Christmas through the children's eyes, how wonderful it is. And you get to see the adults kind of realizing Christmas as well. Like when Manny realized that Santa Claus is actually real you see the Christmas magic come through and that's really what it's all about so there isn't really much to the whole thing kind of like those Hallmark Christmas movies where you know that Susie is gonna wind up with Tommy at the end of it all you know it's just it's just wonderful to go through the process but uh, yeah so if you haven't seen this you know definitely check it out you know Christmas time is pretty awesome little story you know like all these CGI cartoons lots of fun lots of jokes in there it's actually really good and uh, yeah so other than that we got a whole bunch of behind-the-scenes stuff gonna talk about and uh, let's uh, get to all that stuff further uh, now so as I was mentioning earlier about how this special seems kind of a bit inconsistent you know with Christmas stuff I'm gonna go even further into that yeah so the holiday that they are celebrating as they stated in the special is Christmas right like they call it Christmas and everything but you know obviously this is all well before Christmas was first celebrated so it really can't be Christmas. However, Christmas did incorporate many traditions from old ancient pagan celebrations, you know, from the winter solstice celebrations, you know, like Yule, where the Yule party goers did indeed decorate their yard and their home and all that. And that tradition has been happening long before the first Christmas. And who knows how far back that tradition started. So it's kind of in the realm of plausibility that uh, this special is kind of maybe be more so celebrating Yule and they just call it Christmas because you know for funsies <laughs> obviously not really but I'm just trying to make sense of it all as much sense as you can make about something where mammoths speak you know English but you know <laughs> that's just how I roll Santa as well is a modern human being in prehistoric times who is a magical being so my original question kind of really still stands like how old is Santa Claus in this Ice Age universe like there's so many questions unanswered like he has magic but like how did he get this was time travel involved like, as we've seen in the first Ice Age movie early versions of humans did exist you know they had clothes and some kind of toys and all that kind of stuff they were definitely not as defined as a species yet as Santa Claus is in in this one with their larger craniums and their kind of clunkiness you know not as a refined modern human like Santa but then again you know in the end I guess it wouldn't be as magical to see a kind of practically a Neanderthal version of Santa so eh, 
I guess this works out pretty good. Many of those unanswered questions get lumped into the reindeer here as well. They are shown with magic dust flying off of them as they are airborne sometimes, so it's like, you know, where did all this magic really come from? I'm assuming it's all the same magic that, you know, Santa has, so like, that'd be a pretty cool connection between everybody. Would be kind of neat to see a little short movie explaining this, but, uh, you know, what do I know? So the Ice Age reindeer are shown with horns on their heads between their antlers, right? Which, you know, I can't find, you know, any evidence of prehistoric reindeer, you know, having those extra horns. Some antlers may swoop in front of their foreheads, but not actually coming out of their foreheads. Unless I'm missing something about prehistoric hooved quadrupeds, then, you know, please let me know down in the descriptions below. But my theory is that these are alien reindeer, and they brought magic along with them from their planet, <laughs> you know? And maybe this magic made a human more of a modern human uh, and called him Santa. <laughs> Seems ridiculous, but it's really not out of the realm of possibilities, as UFOs and alien technology do exist in the Ice Age franchise. We've seen UFOs frozen in the ice, I think a couple of times in this franchise. Scrat, the saber-toothed squirrel, has even accidentally gone into one of these UFOs, activated it, and flown around the universe. Oh, well, well, the galaxy anyway. So that is a not only plausible, but possible answer for, you know, how all the Christmas magic works in the Ice Age universe. Speaking of the Ice Age universe, man, like, it's actually pretty expansive from all the stories that they've had, you know, in their entire saga. The first Ice Age movie came out in 2002, and it kind of snowballed from there, right? You also had Ice Age The Meltdown, Ice Age Dawn of Dinosaurs, Ice Age Continental Drift, and Ice Age Collision Course. There was also a spin-off movie, The Ice Age Adventures of Buck Wild. There was this Christmas special, there was an Easter special called Ice Age The Great Eggscapade. There was a short TV series called Ice Age Scrap Tales. There was like nine short little films. There was a bunch of video games of all sorts. And there was even a live action Ice Capades kind of show. Ice Age Capades would be a pretty good name for it. Quite a bit of stuff in there. This Christmas special would have taken place between the third and the fourth Ice Age movies, so it does, you know, fit in pretty decent. One thing that is pretty consistent with all these Ice Age movies is that kind of ongoing joke of Scrat, the saber-toothed squirrel, tries and fails to get an acorn, but he finally succeeded! Blue Sky Studios, the studio that makes the Ice Age franchise, will no longer be making these films. I think some other studio is gonna start making them or something. So some animators from Blue Sky Studios got together to say goodbye to their beloved franchise and they made a quick uh, 30 second little short film of Scrat finally getting an acorn and scarfing it down, kind of tying up that loose little end to really kind of give a happy little send off from the studio to the fans from the franchise. And with that happy little send off, uh, I will end this video here too. So uh, yeah, yeah. And I guess uh, Merry Christmas to all. Yeah. Right on and there you go. So thanks for watching the video. I hope you liked it as much as I did making it. Also, feel free to check out the source material that I featured in this video. And if you want to leave a comment on anything you may have liked or things I might have missed in this, you know, feel free to do so. Or anything else, you know, just to say hi. That's cool too. And other than that, you know, uh, have a great day. Thanks.